Okay, this is Dave Vellante, and we're here at AT&T Park. It's the NetApp customer event at Oracle Open World. We were here last month for the VMworld NetApp event. We had about 1,200 customers. NetApp's expecting about four or 500 today. We're here with Steven Simpaco and John Tobin of, of Sharp Healthcare uh, from San Diego. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank Hi, you. how you doing? Good to see you, good event, Oracle Open World. Great weather. Yeah. Fantastic weather. It was a lot colder last month here in San Francisco. You guys, Had a you know, rain. yeah, no, it was good. It was good. It was just a little cool. But uh, so we're here at Oracle Open World. You guys are obviously Oracle customers. You're obviously NetApp customers. Um, John, why don't you start? Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Sharp. Sharp. We um, service San Diego County. We have seven hospitals. We have two medical groups. We have uh, our own HMO. We um, we are local to San Diego, and um, about 15,000 employees. We're the, um, behind the military, where we toggle between Qualcomm for the number of employees for um, a, a non-military or non-government organization. Uh, 2,600 physicians, um, yeah, it's pretty, um, we're the largest healthcare organization in San Diego. And what's your role? I'm the director of IT. Okay, great. And, and Stephen, uh, tell us what you do. I manage the database team. Uh, and we have about uh, 350 databases, both Oracle, SQL Server, Cache, MySQL. Um, that's about it. And, and obviously you got a bunch of uh, fast systems, I understand, is that right? We do. We have a ton of fast systems, thanks to NetApp. Like uh, dozens, maybe. <laughs> 30 plus, I'm told. Is that true? Uh, we have a large data enterprise databases on there, um, multiple petabytes of data, um, servicing all of our, uh, all of San Diego. Um, holding customer information and patient data um, and personal information. But, but for a physician, they're never fast enough. <laughs> well, you know, it's, I was going to say, so the healthcare industry is funny because physicians have never been the, the fastest adopters of technology, right? But so is that a challenge that you guys face? Talk about that a little bit. It is. It is a challenge because two-second delay in uh, when they click on a, on a button is a long time for a physician, and they're complaining about it. What's interesting is that we're finding that the younger physicians are more adaptive and are willing to embrace the technology and the computer systems than the older physicians. So is the answer to, to give them all iPads, or what do you think? You know, they, that, that is where we're going. You know, mobility is coming up. That's our next phase, you know. We're just, we need to have the mobile app so we could do bedside care. We could actually enter the charges right at the, the, the bedside. Are you guys building uh, the equivalent of an app store for your enterprise? We have an app store for our um, patients, for our patient portal system, but we do not have an app store for the um, for the physician jet. Is that something that you see forthcoming? or? Um, being in healthcare, you're kind of dependent on the vendors, so we're kind of limited by the vendors' um, technology and what they promote and what they deliver to us. And there's always the uh, HIPAA looming, right? I mean, that's, uh, that's always a factor. So. What's changed in the in the DBA world um, in in, uh, in the in the let's say last five or ten years? Um, well, you know, it's all about efficiency, performance, um, and having the data database uh, data available. Um, so we're always looking for ways to be flexible uh, for high performance and for redundancy. Um, and with NetApp, you know, we, we have that agility to um, provide faster access to the data. So you guys are doing. Uh, on tap eight and seven mode is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Have you have you looked at at clustering at all? And what are your thoughts on that? It's coming up. That 2013. Is, yeah. Really? That's something. That, that's a, that's a short term initiative for you guys. Yes. yes, it is. Why? What's driving that? This this year was um storage grid. We um we partnered with one of our other strategic partners, um, Fuji, and we um, implemented storage grid for our dot cam images and stuff, so that we can just in ingest the image into the storage grid and we could put it out multiple locations so we have redundancy and like Steve was saying we need 724 you know response with high response time 724 solutions we can't afford to be down at all so that's obviously storage grid object storage right yes. what kind of changes did you have to make 
to adapt to that whole object storage paradigm, you know, the policy driven and abstracting out the metadata. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, we were, um, well, originally we were, um, we had the DICOM servers at the different seven, seven different hospitals, um, and they were all local to the sites. So we had no redundancy, we had no disaster recovery, we had no um, backup. Well, we had backups, but not in multiple locations. So with the storage grid, we're able to centrally look, um, move all those servers centrally into one central location, and then send those DICOM images out to multiple disks at different two different data centers. Right, okay, so that was uh, 2012, you're saying 2013 is clustering. What's driving that? Reliability. Redundancy. HA. Yep. HA, 724, can't be down. If the head goes down, we need to like have a couple backup heads. We need to have fell over. All right, okay, so now I have to ask you, are you guys, um, I listened to Dave Hitz at a customer event uh, a while back, maybe a year ago, and he was sort of talking about how a lot of the customers don't turn on a lot of these efficiency features that NetApp sort of bundles in. Are you guys doing that, uh, turning them on? I mean, they're talking about things like compression or dedupe or the thin provisioning. Is that something that you guys use? We do. Um, with with the demands that our physicians and our healthcare needs, um, we, we implement those things, like direct NFS, you know, access to the, to the storage network faster than going through the OS. Um, so we do a lot of um, PLCs to implement that stuff and to test it and to make sure it's sufficient for us. We're deduping also. Are you guys virtualizing your apps? Yes, we are. Yeah, we are about 75% virtualized. Is that uh, using OVM or VMware? Or? VMware. Okay, so how's that working out for you? Can you can you talk a little bit about that? Because you know, a lot of customers say, well, Oracle's sort of reluctantly supporting, and, but we've found real benefits. Talk about your experiences there. With um, with VMware, we don't really, we're not virtualizing any of our Oracle databases. Uh, with Oracle, we decided to virtualize in building a rack, um, a Linux rack on NetApp, and we have multiple instances and use resource management to kind of um, throttle those instances so they don't compete with each other. Um, with VMware, um, that is, we use a lot of that for our SQL Server environments, our SQL Server databases and our SQL Server applications, the smaller niche applications. What do you like about NetApp and what could they do better? I, I like the tools that, that allows us to do snap cloning. Um, we, we use that quite a bit to replicate databases so that we can create a reporting database to offload some of the reporting um, during the day so that we have better performance on our production systems, our clinical applications. Um, I think what they could do better is, is integrate with Oracle on their, in their rack environment so that we can do restores, um, node independent, instant in, instance independent. Yep. Right, right, so that's a recovery yes. uh, capability right. that you'd like to see more seamless. Right, they, they, they could recover, but um, we have to recover to the same node that you did the backup on. Ah, okay, so you can't be any available node, it has to be the same one. So that would that would allow you to... You need to be flexible enough to be able to restore to a different server name or different IP address. So that would give you better asset utilization if you could do that and better better recovery performance, is that right? Yes. yes. More flexibility as well. You know, we don't want to recover the node that we lost to instance. We want to be able to recover the database on any node of the rack. Where does NetApp rank in terms of your suppliers? Um, the, 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 the top tier, they sort of... Middle of the pack, how would you describe that? I, I think it's one of our top tier. Um, I mean, we have we, we started with NetApp in 2006 with a, a proof of concept. And it's proven itself over the years, and now we're up to three petabytes. Are they your primary storage supplier? They are our largest. We, um, we also use HP, EVA, um, for some of our other um, AIX um, applications, but they are our primary. And NetApp is growing and we seem to be moving off of the H, um, HP EVA onto NetApp. Um, okay, last question is, uh, what's the future hold for you guys? I mean, what's, uh, what's the real vision for your business and, uh, and what do you need from an infrastructure standpoint to achieve that? Uh, we, need, we need 724 applications, zero, absolutely zero downtime. I mean, uh, physicians are making patient care decisions, life or death decisions on information that's stored in the computer. We, we no longer have the paper chart. Those systems have to be available, you know, 724. All right, John and Stephen, thanks very much for taking some time out and uh, spending it with us. Keep it right there. We'll be back with more interviews from AT&T Park. We'll be right back.